Okay, so we've got an assets file, which has all of our little puppet pieces. And we've got a stage file, which shows our finished frames. If we want to kind of see what, how those frames are changing, we can use the eyeball here. We don't need to run an animation test with the timeline necessarily. I am looking at my rough storyboard and I've established my setting. Now I'm ready to introduce a character. So I need to build that asset of the character. And so I bring that asset into my assets folder and then I bring it onto my assets file, right? And this character comes in as a smart object, but I'm gonna want to size it. There he is, gonna drop down through the clouds. Boom. So I'm just gonna show him just like that. And then I'm going to rasterize it. But this is one of those instances where you have to look ahead and understand that I'm gonna have more than just that one layer asset for my character. So that's that one. It's gonna crush that, that cupcake tower. Then they're gonna crush the cake pops. And then they're gonna get really big. Three of them are gonna come down at once. So I'm also going to bring in, shrink this. I'm gonna bring in multiples. And I could do this later as well, and maybe that would be less confusing. But the reason I saved that asset in my assets folder is because later when I want to bring in bigger ones, I have it to bring in. And now the other one might be this big, you know, taking out that cupcake in the foreground. Does that make sense? Different puppets for different purposes. I don't want to then take the smaller one and make it larger because that would lose resolution. So I'm going to work with this asset, my little creature. I'm going to mark him green because he's my hero asset. He's the thing that the audience is experiencing the story through. And now I'm going to set up his motion, just like I did with the clouds. But this time, because I need it to be a really direct motion, it's not wishy-washy like clouds. I need to go straight down. I'm going to make a duplicate of it, Command-J. This is why digital animation is such an advantage, because you can make perfect copies. Then I'm going to hold down Shift. Whoops. Got to make sure I'm on the right layer. And have auto-select layer turned off. I'm going to hold down Shift so that you can see those little pink lines. That will lock it on an axis. So it won't travel left or right at all. So this is a duplicate and I want to then move it down to here, right? And then when I move it down to there, I want the cupcake tower, which I'm going to also duplicate, command J. I want the cupcake tower to move down the same amount, like it's being hit. So I'm going to mark this as blue because this goes, actually I'll do it as sea foam, which is a new option. Because that will go with this one. So I'll make them both sea foam. So one layer will be like that. The other layer will be like this. Kind of make sense? So you're kind of setting up what you need for your assets. So for my next frame, it's not this, it's this with the clouds moving a little bit. So I'm going to take that whole folder of clouds, and I'm just going to move them a little bit. Maybe in play with their opacity a little bit. So that's a little fussy. But I like those kind of variations. They make it more believable. Okay, so now that's my finished frame. I'm going to go to the, my topmost visible layer, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible, Command A, Command C, Command V. Okay. 
Next, I already have my next layer set up. So Command D. I'm going to move the clouds a little bit more. Like so. Play with the opacity a little bit more. Like so. And then I turn on some layers I want on and I turn off others. So now it's the seafoam ones. And if I want, I can adjust them a little bit. I'll move him down just a tiny bit to really make contact with that. And if I want to be a little silly, I can add a new element here. And so far, I've only composited from existing pixels, but you are also allowed with this project to just add your own stuff. So if I want to use my brush and I want to use like this kind of golden yellow color and I want to show a little impact blast, I can do that as it hits. It's going to be super subtle, but you'll see what it looks like. So then I hold down Option and I say Layer, Merge Visible, Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all, go to my stage, Command V to paste it in. Now if that seems like a sudden change, it is, because I want these to really feel like they're dropping out of the sky. So again, my animation is nice and slow. Clouds rolling in. And then all of a sudden, boom. Now my next frame, I'm going to hit Command D to deselect, then delete that merged layer. I'm going to move the clouds a little bit with my Move tool, playing with all my puppet pieces. right? And then I'm going to actually turn off my creature and turn off that cupcake layer. Now it's gone. And this is my next frame. So, and I'm not sure if I want to shake this background or not. You know what? I will. I'll make a duplicate of it, and I'm just going to move it down a couple clicks. But I made it as a duplicate, right? so it's going to look like that. And I want to get rid of that impact blast that I drew. I'm going to mark that yellow. I'll do special effects as yellow. Okay, so now that's my next frame. So I go up to the top most visible layer, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible. Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all, Command V to paste it in. And now I want to show the recoil from that thing being pushed out of existence. And so I spring this back up. Huh, that's weird. Oh, that's because I haven't gotten rid of this. Sorry. Deselect, delete. There we go. You have to delete it before you can see any change that happens. So now this is going to spring back up. And the clouds are going to start. This is what's nice about panning. Now I need to start them back over again from this side. So they start coming in. Hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A, copy, uh, select it all, Command C, copy it all, Command V, paste it in. So you see that little shift in that middle landscape and the shift in the clouds. Now I actually have this built in. I just finished my first three panels of my rough storyboard. Knocking out that cupcake tower. And now there needs to be a little calm before the next one comes in. So what do I do? I'm going to animate those clouds. But if, first I'm going to just save my progress. So save my stage. I have 10 frames now for about three frames of my rough storyboard. It took 10 frames for me to animate that. 
Now I'm going to deselect this, delete it, save my assets. And now I'm going to play with just the clouds again. So move them in. Let's make them even stronger. I don't think I'm even seeing these ones yet. And then option, layer, merge visible. And it's a lot more interesting when I'm just showing nothing happening to have those clouds moving in again, right? Than to truly have nothing happen <laughs> until my next action. So Command D, delete, move those clouds some more. Let's take that down then option layer merge visible command a command c i told you i'd be repeating this a lot and then command v to paste it in all right so now i'm going to do one more of clouds and then my it will be my next character drop Move the clouds. Maybe even shift them up a little bit. Option, layer, merge visible. Now the reason we do it into two files is because what if you're missing something? Or when I run an animation test now, it feels like there's something in between I needed to address. Well, my assets file has all the components for every frame. So any frame can be rebuilt or changed or duplicated. My stage is only for the finished frames. All right, so now I'm going to deselect, delete that, save my assets, save my stage, and now I'm going to run my second animation test. Because I, I recommend you run an animation test once you get through one line of your rough storyboard. All right, so now I'm going to run my second animation test. So to do that, I'm going to go to Window. This is on my stage. And in Photoshop, click on Timeline. Use the Timeline Window options and say Make Frames from Layers. Hold down Shift, select all of my frames, and set the same timing, just because that's easiest for a test, of 0.3 seconds. And then... I'm going to hit play. And what I'm looking for is the timing of the drop, right? And you can see that little special effect and you can see the little the little movement of the of the secondary background. Now, I could try to fine-tune it a little bit because that felt a little halting. So what if I select all the frames and I say instead of three frames per second, let's try 0.2 frames. So that would be five frames per second. So 200 milliseconds. Right? And now that, that drop and that hit feels a lot more believable but maybe the clouds are moving too fast, right? So what does that mean? It means I can build in-betweens <laughs> between these two frames and let those clouds build even slower. Does that kind of make sense? All right, but I, need, I needed to know that now because I wanted, I wanted to get a sense of how fast that drop would happen. And so I actually I have another idea. This is also what you can do. This is looking ahead a little bit, but 